So who would win in a head-to-head -head battle? Index funds versus Wall Street. For this battle, we'll consider Warren Buffett as representing index funds, even though he is a big supporter of picking stocks, as that's how he built his fortune. And in the other corner, we'll consider classic stock picking or day trading to be represented by Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, played by Michael Douglas, or Jordan Belfort in The Wolf of Wall Street, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Not to in any way imply that day trading or stock picking is bad and it's a villain thing. It just makes the video more entertaining. So no, no angry comments. So we're gonna sell this once and for all and get to the bottom of this. And I'm gonna try to remain as neutral as I can. If you're new here, I'm Aaron, a 20 year corporate accountant and analyst. So let's just jump right into this thing. In 2007, famous billionaire and investor Warren Buffett bet Ted Zies, a hedge fund manager at a company, that his Vanguard index, which mirrored the S&P 500, could outperform his hand-picked portfolio of stocks made up of five different hedge funds. So 10 years later, come 2017, Warren Buffett ended up winning that bet. His Vanguard index outperformed the hedge fund by a comparison of 85%, while the hedge fund only grew by 22%, producing an annualized return of 7.1% for Warren Buffett while the hedge fund only gained 2.2% annualized. Investors have a wide range of options to choose from when they're building their portfolio. Two popular opinions are investing in index funds and picking individual stocks. One of the absolute worst things you can do when picking a stock is not smashing the like button up. <laughs> okay, seriously. Index funds have gained a lot of popularity in recent years due to their low cost and ease of use. While picking individual stocks has been seen as more time consuming and riskier. In this video, we'll discuss what is the best option available for investors to generate the best possible return looking at relevant statistics, 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 stati statistics, aha, and data. Index funds are a type of mutual fund that track a particular stock market index, such as the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. The main advantage of index funds is their low cost. They have low expense ratios due to being passively managed, meaning they don't need a team of analysts to individually select each stock. Instead, they simply track the underlying index, which means they are automatically diversified across a large number of stocks. One of the best known examples of this is the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, which tracks the S&P 500. Over the long term, this fund has provided solid returns to investors. For example, from 1976, to 2020, the Vanguard 500 Index Fund has had an average annual return of 10.7%, which is higher than the average return of the S&P 500 over the same period, 10.1%. However, it's worth noting that index funds are not immune to bear markets. During 2008 to 2009, the Vanguard 500 Index Fund lost 37% of its value. This illustrates that index funds are not a foolproof investment and investors should be prepared to ride out market volatility. So to give you a general overview of how the stock market performs, it generally goes up a lot more than it goes down. Over the last 50 years, it has gone up 40 of those years, with the average gain over the last 30 years being 9.7%. Over the last 20 years, the stock market has increased 10.3%. So I consider about nine to 11% a pretty good average or ballpark of how your index fund will perform. A bear market usually lasts around 10 months and a bull market lasts around three years. Index funds generally perform better in bull markets and active managed portfolios perform better in bear markets. Now the S&P has its own independent consulting team tracking how individual day traders have been doing and performing. And they have found that over the last five years, 84% of them have been underperforming compared to the S&P 500. Now, they're actually not skewing these numbers in any way because when they look at the 10-year track record, it actually gets a little bit worse. They're underperforming by about 90% when compared to the S&P 500. This is actually thought to be due to all the trading and mistakes compounding. Day traders are just frequently trading too much and suffering from those losses and mistakes. There is always gonna be fluctuations in the market and you can't be panicking every time the market starts to take a dive. In 1974, it actually went down 29%. In 2002, it went down 23%. And in 2008, it went down 38%. So 
So there's always going to be fluctuations in the market. What you want to do is evaluate the stock you're holding and determine if you should be selling or holding for the long term because this is the time to hold and buy stocks. What you want to do is evaluate the stock you have and determine if it's not going to recover and you should sell out. But the last thing you want to do is sell that stock, it'll make a recovery, and then you're kicking yourself wishing you didn't panic and still held on to that stock. Regardless, if your choice is index funds or individual stocks, one of the best things you can do is be consistent. You don't wanna miss those market fluctuations, especially when the market starts to take a dive because you're getting all those great stocks on sale at a discount. Over the last 30 years, if you would have panicked and sold all that stock and didn't buy anything, you would have missed out on some of the greatest bull markets of all time. If you feel like you're getting something out of this video, would you do me a favor and smash the like button as it really helps out my channel with the YouTube algorithm and helps others find this video. So now let's discuss individual stocks. Selecting individual stocks is a much riskier proposition than index funds. The reason is individuals who select individual stocks need to have a deep understanding of those companies and the industries in which those companies operate. Additionally, they need to have the time and expertise to research potential investments and keep up to date with the company news and their financial results. One of the advantages of selecting individual stocks is the potential for an investor to generate much higher returns than they would be generating if they selected an index fund. If they pick the right stock for their investment, they could generate potentially much greater returns than they would ever get through an index fund, as an index fund is capped or mirroring that index. An index fund, such as the Vanguard 500 index, is mirroring the S&P 500. So it'll never outperform the S&P 500 because it is mirroring or reflecting how the S&P 500 is performing. Another great example of individual stock performance is Amazon stock, which provided a return of 45,000% since its IPO in 1997. This is an exceptional return that is unlikely to be achieved by investing in an index fund. However, the risk of selecting individual stocks simply can't be ignored. There are countless examples of companies that have gone bankrupt or lost significant value, wiping out the investment of individual shareholders. For example, Enron was a highly respected company in the early 2000s that ultimately went bankrupt due to accounting fraud. Investors who held Enron stock lost everything. Most individual investors do not have the time or expertise to analyze financial statements, monitor news releases, and assess management quality effectively. This can lead to poor investment decisions and lower returns. Bull and bear markets. The performance of individual stocks and index funds can vary significantly depending upon market conditions. In a bull market, where stocks are generally rising, a few individual stocks are more likely to outperform index funds, but on the whole, index funds will outperform the majority of the market. In contrast, in a bear market, where stocks are generally falling, an actively managed portfolio will perform better. However, index funds will usually drop less than a few specific stocks as they are more diversified. For example, during the bull market of 2010, Amazon, Apple, and Netflix provided exceptional returns for investors. Amazon stock returned over 400% from 2010 to 2019, while Apple stock returned over 800% during the same period. However, during the bear market of 2008 to 2009, the S&P 500 lost 37% of its value. So it depends on what you want to accomplish. Index funds are very diversified, lower risk, lower return potential, and they are much more passive and hands-off and can be seen as a great gateway for blossoming investors to learn about the investing and stock market. However, remember, like anything, it doesn't have to be all for nothing. You don't have to just pick index funds or individual stocks. You can have a mix. It's kind of like a sandbox. You can mix and match as you choose and whatever suits your style. You can have what's called a core and satellite approach, meaning you have a few core investments, but then perhaps you have a few index funds that you allocate a certain percentage of your portfolio to and maintain that. This gives you a safety cushion in your investment portfolio. In the end, it comes down to ultimately your decision and choice because it's your investment portfolio. It's whatever suits your needs best and you find you're most accustomed to and like doing. 
It's depending upon your risk tolerance, your level of money, how consistent you are, and many other factors. Just remember one thing, you can tailor index funds to a certain level. If you're weak in a particular level, such as healthcare or the tech industry, you can buy specific index funds and gain exposure to those specific areas. It doesn't have to be just the S&P 500. There are so many different index funds out there to choose from, and you can easily make them part of your portfolio so you gain exposure to those areas and those sectors that you might be missing. So regarding index funds, if you want a passive approach where you don't have to worry, follow the news, follow the markets, be able to analyze financial reports, and you don't enjoy that part of it, as long as you're consistent with your money and can afford to put in at set intervals, maybe dollar cost averaging every month or week or whatever, index funds might be perfect for you. They are a very hands-off approach to investing and a great way for everyday people to start learning about the investing market. On the other hand, if you like analyzing stocks, poring over financial statements, following the news and trends, and watching the markets, and want to tailor your portfolio to specific companies, picking individual stocks might be great for you. You have the potential for very high returns, but of course, like anything, you have to be willing to accept a certain level of risk in order to generate or have the potential to generate those higher level of returns. If you're new to investing and want to get started and just wondering how to invest, how to actually invest and get started, there is a great video coming up on the left on how to invest for everyday people. If you're wanting to start picking stocks and analyzing reports and learn how to read an annual report, that is the next video coming up on the right. I just want to give a shout out to all my loyal subscribers and followers. I really appreciate it. Feel free to drop a comment anytime, even if it's just to say hi. Thanks for all your support, and I hope you have a great day.